Hello everyone, welcome to IPM IAS Academy's Daily News Highlights. Today is 29th of July 2024. Let's see the important news for today's discussion. New job schemes to kick off soon, Somanathan. So this particular news is connected with the budget provisions or the budget allocation uh, related to the, uh, the uh, employment generation and skilling in our country. The government is confident of launching the schemes in the Prime Minister's package for employment and skilling which were announced in last week's budget within this financial year. That includes the internship program for 1 crore youth in 500 top companies whose design details will be worked out in consultation with the industry. And it is actually mentioned by Finance Secretary T.V. Somanathan. In this news, the Finance Secretary is mainly mentioning about the new allocation regarding the, uh, the budget that was presented last week and especially in connection with the employment and skilling. Finance Secretary mentions that they expect all these schemes to start off within this financial year and we have tried to make sure the coverage of the employment linked incentive schemes is as far as possible widespread and not try to make technological sectoral choices. While scheme A and C are of all industries, scheme B is for manufacturing jobs. In the budget allocation they clearly mentioned about how the funding is divided and uh, uh, given for each sectors. So there they mentioned about agricultural sector, manufacturing sector and all those sectors so that how the employment generation can be done in all these sectors. So read this article, you will get a, uh, an idea regarding the budget allocation and also some of the ministries which are responsible for implementing these programs. So this news is actually coming in page number 1, General Studies 3 and Indian Economy. It, we can also say that it's also a part of Indian polity and governance. In midnight reshuffle, President appoints 6 new governors. We know that the governors of the states are appointed by the President. BJP veteran Om Mathur has been appointed Governor of Sikkim and former IAS officer K. Kailash Nathan, Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. So, President Draupadi Murmu appointed six new governors and reshuffled three others, a Rashtrapati Bhavan communique has said. The communique was issued past Saturday midnight. BJP veteran Om Mathur has been appointed as the governor of Sikkim. Manipur governor Ansuya Uiki has been replaced by Lakshman Prasad Acharya, who has been moved from Sikkim to Assam and given additional charge of Manipur. So a reshuffle is happening. Make sure that you understand these names. And Mr. Mathu's appointment comes amid speculation that he is a contender for the post of BJP president. Another significant appointment is that of former IAS officer K. Kailash Nathan, a close aide of Prime Minister Narendra Modi when he was the chief minister of Gujarat as the lieutenant governor of Puducherry. The Rashtrapati Bhavan Communique said the incumbent governor Assam, uh, Gulab Chand Kataria, will now be the new governor of Punjab as uh, Banwari Lal Purohit's resignation has been accepted. He has been appointed administrator of the Union Territory of Chandigarh. And Jharkhand governor CP Radhakrishnan, who was also holding additional charge of Telangana, has been appointed governor of Maharashtra. Former Union Minister of Labour and Employment Santosh Kumar Gangwar will be the new Jharkhand Governor while former Deputy Chief Minister of Tripura Jishnudev Varma will be the new Telangana Governor. A former Lok Sabha member from Assam uh, Raman Dekha has been appointed Governor of Chhattisgarh while a former Lok Sabha member of Mysore and Karnataka CH Vijay Shankar will be the Meghalaya Governor. In Rajasthan, BJP leader from Maharashtra, uh, Haribo Kisanrao Bagde has been appointed governor to succeed Kalraj Mishra. These were the main changes that actually happened in the governor's appointments. Now, what are the constitutional provisions which are connected with the appointment of the governor? The governor of a state shall be appointed by the president by warrant and under his hand and seal and it is mentioned in article 155 of the Indian constitution. A person to be eligible for appointment as governor should be a citizen of India and has completed age of 35 years and that is mentioned in article 157. 
So in the present scenario, many new appointments were made and also some reshuffles also happened. Read this article, try to understand about the, the constitutional provisions which are connected with the appointment of the governor and the powers enjoyed by the president. So two important aspects are coming here. One is the president and one is the governor. So how the governor is appointed uh, in a particular state. So all those points are mentioned in our constitution. So please do read about it and make your own notes regarding this. So this particular article is coming in page number 5, General Studies 2, Indian Polity. Sides is its norms for agarwood export. Move to benefit lakhs of farmers from the northeast. So what is this news all about? India has successfully prevented the inclusion of agarwood. Okay, its a botanical name is Aquilaria malaxensis. In the review of significant trade, review of significant trade of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna, which is otherwise known as CITES. So, what do you mean by this CITES? CITES means the Convention on International Trade in, in the Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora is an international agreement between governments. Its aim is to ensure that International trade in specimens of wild animals and plants does not threaten the survival of the species. So basically to protect the, the plants and the animals. CITES was drafted as a result of the resolution adopted in 1963 at a meeting of the members of IUCN. IUCN means the, the, the World Conservation Union, International Union for Conservation of Nature that is IUCN. So basically, the objective of the sites is to protect the flora and fauna. We should make sure that its survival is inevitable for the nature and the environment. So that is the main uh, idea or the essence of the sites. So here, India has successfully prevented the inclusion of agarwood. The sites also notified a new export quota of the highly valuable and aromatic resinous wood and oil of the trade from India from April 2000. 24. Since agarwood is cultivated in different parts of India, especially in the northeastern states, is development is this development is going to benefit lakhs of farmers in certain districts of Assam, Manipur, Nagaland, and Tripura. Okay, so this is the crucial point. The farmers of agarwood actually benefiting out of this particular move. Aquilaria melanchensis was listed in Appendix 2 of the sites, a category of the species that are not necessarily threatened but whose trade must be controlled. For the first time in 1995, based on India's proposal at COP9 in 1994. COP means Conference of Parties. So, all these are connected with the climate change, environmental protection, etc. The removal of India from the RST, RST means Review of Significant Trade for Aquilaria Melanchesis was achieved based on a non-detriment finding study of the plant species by the Botanical Survey of India and the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, MOEFCC. Okay. So, we are discussing about some major organizations, institutions and ministries in connection with the, with the environment. Here, sites, you need to have an idea. Please read about sites. What is sites? What is the objective of sites? And why it was constituted? And you should also understand about what is IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature. What is IUCN? And you should also understand about the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. You should also understand about the, the Botanical Survey of India. Okay, and you should have a very clear idea about this. What is this Aquilaria melanchensis? Because all these things can be possible questions in the, uh, in the civil services examination. You need to have an idea and understanding about it and how it is actually benefiting the, the farmers uh, from the northeast. So, you should have a comprehensive idea about these points when you are actually reading this particular article. Plastic mess. More efforts must be made to curb production and promote alternatives. This is coming in page number 8, General Studies 3, Environment. Basically, this is about the, 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 the plastic, the usage of the plastics and how it is actually affecting the environment. So, very, very significant article. Why? Because the, the usage of plastic is 
growing every day it is actually growing according to 2020-21 report by the central pollution control board cpcb 4 million tons of plastic waste are generated annually unfortunately only a, only a quarter of the waste is recycled or treated with the rest ending up in landfills or being disposed of unsustainability this is the problem so the the production is really huge but its recycling is not happening ultimately that will end up as a burden for the environment so here is the problem how do we address this issue since 2016 the plastic waste management rules have mandated that users of the plastics are responsible for collecting and recycling their waste so it is the responsibility of the users to collect and recycle the waste that is based on 2016 plastic waste management rule these requirements or the extended producer responsibility rules were initially voluntary but are now enforced through an online epr trading platform the epr system involves packages importers and large industrial users of plastic packaging as well as professional recyclers registering with the cpcb the recyclers who have networks to collect plastic waste recycle the waste and receive validated certificates for each ton they recycle so there is a process involved in this recycling so, but there are certain issues also connected with this recycling process connects, connected with this system there are certain issues also and that is the thing it is actually addressing in this particular article so read this article try to understand about the the growing concern regarding the usage of plastic waste and why we are not able to uh, recycle the entire plastic waste which, waste which are actually produced in the country and what are the obstacles to it and how we can actually tackle these uh, things what are the loopholes in our policies or in the system uh, which is actually going against the the perfect implementation of the rules and regulations in the country so those things are clearly mentioned here so uh, in the context of this news you need to have an idea about what is cpcb central pollution control board they have given certain statistics regarding the plastic waste management in our country so read this article and make your own notes regarding the how the plastic waste management is uh, affecting the environment on reservations and the obc creamy layer so what what is this news all about so it's a very important news why because it clearly talks about the constitutional provisions related to the reservation what are the recommendations of the Mandal Commission? So, Mandal Commission was a commission constituted by the government of India uh, to give suggestions uh, regarding the, uh, the reservation in our country, OBC reservation in our country. What is the criteria for exclusion of the creamy layer of the other backward class? Is the concentration of reservation benefits a concern? What can be done for more equitable distribution? Okay, these are the points we are actually addressing in this particular article and this article actually uh, came uh, because of the uh, the allotment of indian administrative service to puja kedkar as an other backward uh, non creamy layer candidate coupled with multiple disabilities has raised issues surrounding the creamy layer in obc reservations so that's the issue which actually led to this particular article so here they are talking about the history of reservation article 15 and 16 of the indian constitution guarantee equality to all citizens in any policy of the government and public employment respectively in order to achieve social justice they also enable special provisions for the advancement of the socially and educationally backward classes or obc scheduled caste scheduled tribes etc reservations for sc and st are fixed at 15% and 7.5% respectively. So these statistics are important because these are all mentioned in our constitution or uh, these definitions or the, these explanations were came out as a result of our uh, constitutional provisions. So here they are clearly mentioning that the reservation for SC and ST are fixed at 15% and 7.5% respectively in jobs, educational institutions and public sector undertakings at the central level. It was in 1990 
when vp singh government was uh, in power uh, that 27% reservation for obc was implemented in central government employment based on the mandal commission report or mandal commission recommendations so mandal commission uh, recommendations were initiated in the year 1980 Subsequently, in 2005, reservation was enabled for OBC, SC and ST in educational institutions including private institutions. In 2019, 10% reservation was enabled for the economically weaker sections or EWS category among the unreserved category. So, these are all crucial points. How the uh, the uh, reservation is working in our country and what are the important uh, recommendations which are connected with the reservation in our country. So, in that Mandal Commission we cannot ignore, we cannot neglect. It is a very important topic and what is the uh, the percentage of allocation or percentage reservation for SC, ST, OBC, uh, EWS category then um, uh, economically and socially uh, backward classes all those points are actually mentioned in this particular article and what you have to do is you read this article and make your own notes and do a small research about uh, right to equality portion in, in our constitution another major point of discussion is uh, what is creamy layer okay what is creamy layer in india the criteria for identifying a person as part of the creamy layer is based on the recommendations of the Justice Ram Nandan Prasad Committee that was in the year 1993, Ram Nandan Prasad Committee and it is determined by the position or income of an applicant's parents alone. So based on the income of the parents, this is actually identified. The criteria for belonging to creamy layer is parental income excluding income from salary and agricultural income being more than 8 lakh in each year in the last three consecutive financial years. So basically a family which is actually getting more than 8 lakhs in a year can be considered as a creamy layer. But those who are not getting that kind of an income can be considered as a non-creamy layer. So, here in this article, they are also mentioning about who can be considered as a creamy layer person and what are the conditions or what are the criteria which actually talks about the creamy layer uh, category in our country. So, read this article, make your own notes regarding this. The article also discusses about why this issue is actually uh, happening right now uh, because there are a lot of uh, um, malpractices which are happening in this area. So, people claim that they are they belong to uh, obc category or uh, uh, the, uh, the non creamy layer category and getting benefits out of it okay and on the other hand there are people who are actually not getting these benefits also who are eligible to get these benefits they are not getting the benefits also so this is the the crucial problem that we are actually facing and what is the way forward so the way forward is uh, you need to fix the gap which are actually there in this uh, uh, reservation Okay, you need to scrutinize the applications, really scrutinize the application whether they are eligible or not and that need to be ensured and then only the benefit should be uh, allotted, allotted to them. So, this process should be very strict and that process should be uh, completely corruption free. Then only it will be, uh, they will be able to give justice or provide justice for the people who, who are eligible to get these benefits. So, read this article, it is very important. Why? Because it, it, it actually talks about many policies, it talks about the constitutional provisions, it talks about various recommendations and various committees. So, all these committees, recommendations and regarding reservation is really important for you as a civil service aspirant, especially when we have uh, witnessed a problem connected with, uh, the, uh, with, the, with the allotment of seats for a civil service candidate and this article is coming in page number 10 general studies to indian polity what is south africa's new law on climate change as the whole world is going through climate change crisis the south africa is coming up with a new initiative in the climate change aspect the south africa's president cyril ramaphosa signed into law a piece of legislation that will impose mandatory curbs on the emissions from large fossil fuel, heavy industries and require climate adaptation plans from towns and villages. The president said that this would enable 
South Africa to meet its emission reduction commitments under the Paris Agreement. So, they are referring to Paris Agreement because Paris Agreement was the climate change agreement or climate change summit happened. So, in that summit, they have taken certain crucial issues or crucial decisions connected with the, uh, with, with, with the climate change and how to reduce the climate change in, a, in, in the world. So, based on those regulations, based on those policies, uh, the, the South Africa is coming up with an initiative to uh, reduce to curb on the emissions from large and fossil fuel heavy industries okay now what is the significance of this bill this bill is very significant why because uh, at times these countries especially in the developing countries the emissions are more why because we are on a developing stage and the manufacturing or the industry all those aspects are actually going on so we didn't reach that uh, level that high level of a uh, developed state so we are still moving in that direction so in in that process the emissions will be huge but with in that context also we need to understand that we need to reduce this emissions in order to achieve a sustainable uh, world so in in that in such a circumstance only the south africa is coming up with a, a new law on climate change and what is the scenario of India in, in relation with this? India does not have a comprehensive legislation on climate change. Priyanka Chaturvedi, the Rajya Sabha parliamentarian, had moved a private member's bill called the Council on Climate Change's bill most recently in 2022. This proposed setting up a council chaired by Prime Minister for advising the union government on all matters related to climate change but there has been no significant movement on this so far so which means we do not have a, a proper bill that or a proper legislation that actually address the climate change however the climate change features in multiple acts and subordinate legislation so in various acts you can see some elements of climate change and uh, the problems which uh, the, the initiatives, the policies which can actually reduce the climate change in the world. These include the Environmental Protection Act, Forest Conservation Act, Energy Conservation Act, Water Prevention Con and Control of Pollution Act. All these are such acts which actually mentions about the climate change. But are these enough? No, it is not enough. We need to have a comprehensive uh, uh, law or legislation which can actually curb the emission in our country. In April this year, the Supreme Court ruled that citizens have a right against the adverse effects on the climate change and referred to the fact that India did not have an omnibus legislation on climate change. Okay, so which means we do not have an omnibus legislation or a comprehensive legislation on climate change. Despite the constitutional guarantees that give the citizens right to equality before law and right to life and personal liberty, it was now necessary in the court's view to explicitly link the impact of climate change as something which impedes those rights of liberty, life and equality. In our constitution, there are clear-cut provisions which are connected with the, uh, the right to equality, right to life, right to personal liberty, etc. But still, we are not able to achieve this because Climate change or environmental degradation or environmental pollution will definitely affect a, a, a person's health, which is a part of right to life, right? So, but still, we are not in a position to address this with a comprehensive legislation. So, that is what is mentioned here. So, read this article. You will get an idea about the climate change because climate change is a very crucial topic in civil service preparation. Um, you need to understand about the conference of parties, you need to have an idea about what is uh, UNFCC, you need to have an idea about uh, the recent uh, climate change summits that actually happened, then emission reduction and emission targets, all these points are need to be understood from the perspective of climate change. So, make your own notes regarding this and what is it, what are its implications on India and what is India's stand on uh, the climate change and the sustainable development. All these points need to be taken care of or all these points need to be understood from the perspective of civil service examination. So, this particular article is actually coming in page number 10, General Studies 2, International Relations and Environment. Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini formally grants Peshkian presidential powers. Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khomeini uh, gave his official endorsement of Masood 
Pesheshkian uh, as the Islamic Republic's ninth president on Sunday. So a new president is elected in the uh, in, in, in Iran. So the new reformist president is due to be sworn in before the parliament on Tuesday. Uh, the endorsement ceremony was held in the capital Tehran in the presence of the senior Iranian officials and the uh, foreign diplomats. So there is, this is a new development that is actually happening in the international uh, relations. Uh, okay, Iran, uh, already they are getting a lot of criticism from uh, Israel and Western countries and there they are having a, a new administrator to lead their country. So it is a, an important news for uh, discussion so it is basically an update regarding the change in administration that is happening in iran so this news is actually coming in page number 14 general studies to international relations so here is an announcement regarding the guided prelims come mains program course uh, 2025 so in order to join this course you can take the scholarship test and the scholarship test link is there in the description and once you are taking the test based on your marks you will get fee reduction uh, for the program so this program is ideal for students working professionals and passionate IAS aspirants so please don't wait uh, do click on the link below take the scholarship test and join the program I hope this uh, video was helpful for you you were able to understand some of the key uh, news or uh, happenings in the whole world which are uh, required for a civil service aspirant so please do like share and subscribe our channel do share it with your uh, friends so that uh, they will also get more updates regarding civil service uh, preparation and uh, current affairs